Good morning, second graders. I've got another chapter for us. Um, I've been noticing in the videos that sometimes it seems like it glitches a little bit and it sounds like my words aren't there. I don't know why that's happening, but you can just fill in the blank, I guess. So let's get started. Chapter 14, a light bulb, a pencil sharpener, a coffee pot, and a sack of potatoes. What could possibly go on with this stuff? Galileo was a great scientist, said Mrs. Drizil. He was born in Italy in 1564 and died in 1642. He was the first person to use a telescope to study the stars, and he also helped figure out the laws of gravity. Oh, I know about gravity, said Joe. Mrs. Jules pushed a computer out the window. It fell a lot faster than a pencil. I don't think so, said Mrs. Drizil. Galileo proved that all objects fall at the same speed. He conducted a very famous experiment. He dropped lots of different objects off the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is in Italy. It was built in... Todd raised his hand. You're getting a little boring. Oh my goodness, am I? Asked Mrs. Drizil. Rondi, Leslie, Paul, and Calvin nodded their heads. I'm sorry, said Mrs. Drizil. She thought a moment. Hmm. I know. Let's do an experiment here. The children cheered. They loved experiments. Mrs. Drizil rubbed her hands together. Let's see. We'll need a coffee pot, a pencil sharpener, a light bulb, and she thought a moment. We need something heavy. An elephant's heavy, said Benjamin. There are no elephants in the wayside school, said Mrs. Drizil. Everyone laughed. How about a sack of potatoes, asked Ron. I bet Miss Mush has one. Go see, said Miss Drizil. There's a coffee pot down in the office, said Stephen. Go get it, said Mrs. Drizil. If I had a screwdriver, I could get the pencil sharpener off the wall, said Eric Fry. I've got a screwdriver, said Jenny. Why does Jenny have a screwdriver? Can we use a fluorescent light bulb, asked Bebe. She looked at the ceiling. I guess so, said Mrs. Drizil. How do I get it, asked Bebe. You're the scientist. You figure it out, said Mrs. Drizil. Bebe put her chair on top of her desk and stood on it, but she still couldn't reach the ceiling. Hey, Benjamin, let me have your chair. She put Benjamin's chair on top of hers, but still wasn't tall enough. Calvin dumped the waste paper basket onto the floor. Try this, he said. Bebe turned the trash can upside down and put it on top of Benjamin's chair. Wait a second. So they have a desk, a chair on top of that, another chair on top of that, and an upside down trash can on top of that. This sounds really dangerous. It also makes me think of Officer Buckle and Gloria at the beginning of the year with all those rules and no standing on a swivel chair. Uh-oh. Then she climbed on top, but she still couldn't quite reach. Leslie brought the class dictionary. Jenna, Jenny, and Dana donated their math books. Shari grabbed Mrs. Drazil's old blue notebook. Put that down, yelled Mrs. Drazil, right now. Shari dropped the notebook. Mrs. Drazil, Mrs. Drazil's kindly old face had suddenly turned mean. Don't ever touch that again, ordered Mrs. Drazil. Shari returned, trembling to her seat. Everyone was staring at Mrs. Drazil. She smiled sweetly. Go back to what you were doing, she said. Jason threw Bebe his lunchbox. She set it on top of the books, then climbed on top. Standing on her tiptoes, she was able to pull the cover off the fluorescent light. She grabbed the light just as the pile collapsed beneath her. She fell to the ground, triumphantly holding the unbroken light bulb high above her head. Ron returned with a sack of potatoes from Miss Mush. Stephen returned with Mr. Kidswater's coffee pot. Eric Fry unscrewed the pencil sharpener from the wall. Mrs. Drazil wrote coffee pot, sack of potatoes, pencil sharpener, and light bulb on the blackboard. We're going to drop all four objects out the window at the same time, she said. How many people think the coffee pot will hit the ground first? Is there coffee in it? asked John. It's about half full, Stephen reported. Eight kids thought the coffee pot would hit the ground first. Sixteen thought the sack of potatoes would hit the ground first. Three thought the light bulb would be first. Only Terrence thought the pencil sharpener would hit for it first. Jason, Jenny, Joe, John, and Joy were the judges. You hear the alliteration? All the J's? Mrs. Drazil sent them outside. Stephen held the coffee pot out the window. Bebe held the light bulb out another. Eric Fry held the pencil sharpener out another. And Ron held out the sack of potatoes. Everyone else crowded around to watch. With everyone on the same side of the school, the school, the classroom, the school leaned a little bit 
leaned a little bit, just like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. On your mark, get set, let go, said Mrs. Drizil. The objects fell through the air and smashed against the pavement. A short while later, the judges returned. Their clothes were splattered with coffee. Jenny had bits of potato in her hair. Was the pencil sharpener first, asked Terence. It happened so fast, said Joe, they all hit about the same time. But the coffee pot made the coolest explosion, said Jason. I think the light bulb hit the ground last, said John. Well, that's possible, said Mrs. Drizil. Gravity causes all objects to fall at the same rate, but air slows them down. That's called air resistance, and that's good. Otherwise, raindrops would hurt us. Air resistance slows all things down a little bit, but it has a greater effect on very light objects, such as a piece of paper. And of course, the shape of the paper is important too. A crumbled up piece of paper will fall faster than... You're getting a little boring again, said Mac. Mrs. Drizil stopped talking. Now we, need a pen now we need a pencil sharpener, said Leslie. Paul licked her ear. Why did Paul lick Leslie's ear? Do you remember Dr. Pickle? And what, something that makes me laugh and sad at the same time is Mrs. Drizil is giving a great explanation on air resistance and gravity. And here they go saying she's boring. Silly kids.